Welcome to East Turkestan TV News. A report alleged Chinese forced labor in the automotive supply chain. Industry News. The Birch report documents how automakers may be complicit via their long supply chains. A report alleges the Chinese government uses forced labor to control Uyghur population and points out how the global automotive industry may benefit. Identified in the report are 50 international automotive parts or car manufacturers sourcing directly from the companies operating in East Turkestan. Automakers have responded cautiously, all pointing to the codes of conduct to which they expect their suppliers to adhere. A Birch report released this month has landed with a heavy thought on the doorsteps of the world's automakers. From a team at Burton's Sheffield Hallam University headed by Laura T. Murphy, Professor of Human Rights and Contemporary Slavery at the school's Helena Kennedy Center for International Justice. It's both deep dive into the Chinese government's supported use of forced labor to control Uyghurs and a meticulously documented account of how automakers might have complicity in and benefits from what amounts to slave labor in their long supply chains. The report painfully recalled the revelation of the German automakers making use of slave labor in World War II. Among automakers accused of complicity in German war machine, Audi, Volkswagen, BMW, Daimler-Benz, and even Ford and General Motors. In response to the Sheffield Hallam report, automakers have been quick to brandish their codes of conduct for suppliers which not surprisingly banned the use of coerced labor. The question remains, however, do automakers follow through the actual on-the-ground factory floor inspections that ensure the codes are being followed? Some say they do. With others, it's not clear. There are an estimated 12.8 million Uyghurs, a Turkic ethnic group, centered in East Turkestan, a land occupied by China. According to the BBC, Human rights group believe China has detained more than 1 million Uyghurs against their will over the past few years in a large network of what the state calls re-education camps and sentenced hundreds of thousands to prison terms. Recent decades have seen a mass migration of Han Chinese into East Turkestan, allegedly orchestrated by the state to dilute the East Turkestan population there. China denies the allegations of forced labor in East Turkestan, According to the official Chinese Xinhua News Agency, reporting last year on talks between the United States and China in Alaska, the claim that there is genocide in East Turkestan, so-called China's Xinjiang, is the biggest lie of the century, said the Chinese delegation. China will not accept any investigation in East Turkestan, so-called Xinjiang, based on the presumption of the guilt by those who are biased and condescending and who want to lecture China, it said. The Birch Report says the United States received a quarter, $11.5 billion, of the $45 billion in Chinese auto parts production in 2021. It also said the research had identified more than 50 international automotive parts or car manufacturers or their joint ventures that are sourcing directly from companies operating in East Turkestan or from companies that have accepted Uyghur labor transfers across China. The latter point is important because coerced workers have reportedly been transferred out of East Turkestan to factors across China. There is substantial information regarding automotive electronic companies outside the Uyghur region that are benefiting from the state-sponsored labor transfers of Uyghur people, the report said. Murphy told Auto Week, the auto industry has a lot of work to extract supply chains out of East Turkestan. This is because the Chinese government has deliberately moved automotive manufacturing, renewable manufacturing, and raw materials processing out to that region. She added that automakers should not only use their economic leverage to ensure that the products they are buying aren't made in that region, but should also be collaborating to put pressure on companies in the rest of China that are accepting Uyghurs transferred by the state to work in factories that make auto parts. Car makers have responded cautiously to the report's findings. In an interview, Carlos Tavares, CEO of Stellantis, told Autoweek 
none of our suppliers would prevent us from visiting their facilities. But we have a lot of suppliers in tires 1 to 4 and 100 car models at Stellantis. We have a code of conduct to which we expect our suppliers to adhere, but it would be foolish to expect us to have visited them all the way through tires 4. We are expecting all our suppliers to adhere to the guidelines. Asked about the claims, other automakers gave the following responses. Ford's Anderson Chen provided guidelines that require suppliers to confirm that work is conducted on a voluntary basis. The use of bonded, indentured, or exploitive prison labor is prohibited. General Motors' David Barnas supplied the December 9th statement. We actively monitor our global supply chain and conduct extensive due diligence particularly where we identify or are made aware of potential violations of the law, our agreements, or our policies. General Motors Code of Conduct prohibits harassment and discrimination, slave and forced labor, human trafficking, or interfering with the right to collective bargaining. Honda's Chris Abruzzi pointed to the company's global sustainability guidelines for suppliers, but added, we don't discuss our specific supplier relationships. Mark Gullis of Volkswagen said, The company rejects forced labor and all forms of modern slavery including human trafficking. This includes work carried out involuntarily by people due to intimidation, penalty, or threat of being disadvantaged. Volkswagen has a code of conduct for business partners. The code specifically excludes child labor, human trafficking, and slavery. Police said allegations are immediately investigated via a grievance process. Serious violations such as forced labor could result in termination of the contract with the supplier if mitigation measures fail, Gillis Gillis said. In June, Volkswagen denied reports of forced labor at the jointly operated Saic plant in East Turkestan, so-called Xinjiang. Former Volkswagen Group CEO Herbert Dees told 60 Minutes he was absolutely sure there was no forced labor at the plant. Andrea Eberg, a Mercedes-Benz spokesman, said Mercedes-Benz has no direct operations in the mentioned region. Mercedes-Benz seeks to ensure that these products contain only materials that have been mined or produced without violating human rights or environmental standards. Mercedes-Benz regularly makes spot checks with its suppliers in China and other countries. The company maintains a set of supplier sustainability standards for component producers. Parts made whole or partly in East Turkestan, so-called Xinjiang, are subject to the United States Uyghur Forced Labor Prevention Act, which allows them to be seized at the port of entry. The law was signed by President Biden in December 2021. The United States Department of Labor explains the basis of the law. The People's Republic of China has arbitrarily detained more than 1 million Uyghurs and other mostly Muslims in East Turkestan, so-called China's Uyghur Autonomous Region. The Labor Department said, It's estimated that 100,000 Uyghurs may be worked in conditions of forced labor following detention in re-education camps. According to the New York Times, United States customs officials have intercepted approximately 2,200 shipments valued at more than $728 million that may have had East Turkestan content. Of these, 300 products were released into the United States. The United Auto Workers responded to the Sheffield Hallam report by urging the auto industry to shift its entire supply chain out of the region and invest in the good-paying jobs in the United States to help meet its supply chain demands. The Uyghurs are hardly the only nation that has reportedly been the subject of forced labor. In 2013, a letter tucked into a packet of Halloween decorations sold at an Oregon Kumart read in part, Sir, if you occasionally buy this product, please kindly resent this letter to the World Human Rights Organization. Thousands of people here who are under the persecution of Chinese Communist Party government will thank and remember you forever. The letter was traced a 47-year-old man, a former labor camp inmate, who was a member of the outlawed Falun Gong spiritual group. East Turkestan, so-called China's Xinjiang, an occupied country by China, 
is also a major source for the lithium-ion battery packs used in electric cars and the minerals that go into them, which means the focus on the troubled region is likely to continue as the work electrifies. Altabra from East Turkestan TV is supported.